Good afternoon and welcome here in studio today. We're talking sports with Val. Val joins us and we've got a lot going on here this week, Val. It uh, wasn't going to be quite as busy of a week as it ended up being, but we got a... a no, it wasn't, Steve, and then we got a phone call. <laughs> we got a phone call about 2.30 on Monday uh, afternoon. I got a call from Heath Shanahan with IHSA TV and he uh, asked if we would be interested in, in being the... Uh, broadcaster for IHSA Champions Network up at Mishawaka Marion for the semi-state game. Though. Pretty pretty big deal for us. I mean, that's the kind of the phone call we've been hoping for and, and, and waiting on, And but it did, uh, it did kind of throw our week into a little bit of a havoc because we had to make a few trips up there and, and get things set up with that. And then you've been doing a lot of research, getting things ready and getting a, uh, a color guy and it's, uh, you know, it'll be a surprise. You'll have to uh, tune in to the IHSA Champions Network to see who our color guy is for Friday night. But putting a crew together, putting the whole plan together, it's been, it's been a little bit of uh, extra work this week. And, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like we said, we've been waiting on that phone call. So it was a big one. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to throw, and we'll talk a little bit about it later, that's going to throw our Friday schedule off a little bit as far as what we were planning on doing. But, uh you know we're we're happy to do that, and so as we get started here, uh, this last week since we were here last, uh, not a real crazy busy week. There's been some girls basketball going on, but not uh, a ton of games. Just gonna kind of go down through the list here as as we um, we'll go day by day, mm -hmm. right? We'll start with Friday. We had two games uh, on on Friday. The Argus Dragons hosting the Winnemac Warriors, and you and I were there and. You know, Argus, after losing their opener to uh, Caston, they've looked really good. Yeah. They've, they've looked really good, and they've won three in a row, and, and they're three and one now. They they defeated Winnemac 46-27 uh, at home, and, and they, they looked pretty good doing it. I talked to some of the Argus players on the floor after the game, and they were well aware that they had never beaten Winnemac in their high school careers, and you could tell they were pretty eager to do something about it, and they did. And um, You know, the... Lizzie Edmonds led the way with 15, but it was kind of like a quiet 15 in a way. I yeah, don't know if it was, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it was just a well-balanced effort beyond her. You know, Bella Stoltz, um, Samantha Redinger, uh, Emma Dunlap, I mean, the, and Carly Miller, they all contributed, you know, between six to eight points in support of Lizzie. And, of course, Lizzie, she, you know, her defense was just terrific. I mean, she you can count on her for several block shots every game, and it's... It was just hard for Winnemac to get uh, a whole lot of offense going in the paint because of Lizzie's defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she definitely you know had to obviously had a huge size advantage over Winnemac with uh, Maggie Smith graduating. Uh, that puts the Warriors down a, a few inches yeah. inside, and uh, Ella Gearhart kind of becomes the the five, I guess you would say, for them. And uh, she she goes about. Five six five seven. So going up against uh, six footer in Edmonds. Essentially, Lizzie was playing center field. I mm -hmm. mean, she was playing rim protector, and you can even see it in kind of some of these highlights here. And she was just, uh, yeah, she's just a force. And uh, you know, Argus has several ball handlers. And another thing I talked about with Coach Scott Jennings on the floor after the game is how well they moved the ball. They really passed it well, as you see there. Right. Uh, as a team, you know, their passing is much improved. Coach Jennings wants it to get even better, but, yeah, it was very good. Uh, you know, it, you know, not again, not, not a lot of fancy, necessarily crazy passes, just solid passes, you know, getting the, you know, the ball doesn't get stuck at all. It, it, it's always moving. It's always hopping, and they were able to get pretty good shots most of the night. I was really impressed with how well uh, Emma Dunlap basically controlled the offense. Uh, she she handles the the pressure and and controls that offense very well, and you know gets the ball to the right people at the right time. She's uh, seems pretty happy with you know getting the ball to who she needs to get it to to get the scoring done. Mm -hmm. uh, not you know necessarily trying to uh, to get a lot herself and. With with the core group that they have, they're not real deep, obviously, with with only uh, eleven on the roster. But uh, you know, you only need five on the floor at a time, and, and their first five, six, uh, seven girls are uh, ones that I would go 
you know, take up against almost anybody. Right. Now, they're playing without Amanda Fajardo right now, and she is kind of Lizzie's backup, but she would give them a little bit more depth in the front court. She's got an ankle injury. They're hoping to have her for this coming Tuesday's game against Culver, but, uh, and I know uh, Coach Jennings had really been raving about what she had been doing in kind of the preseason practice and even over the summer to, about how much she had improved, but. But yeah, they, I mean they they haven't. I mean, even though they only have eleven in the whole program, uh, you know, varsity depth is not too big of an issue at this point. Mm -hmm. It does throw you in a little pickle when they're only playing two quarters of uh, JV and trying to get that. Uh, you know, because there's there's a couple younger players that you would like to see get more time than they do. Uh, you you really would like to see them develop. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they just don't have the numbers down there. And, you know, Morgan Barkas, uh, she she could contribute, uh, you know, in, in a big way. She just needs some, some time. And then uh, you also have, uh, well, I'm drawing a blank on uh, Stackhouse, Ava. Ava, Ava, Ava yeah. yeah. So you got Ava Stackhouse, and, and then you got. Uh, I wasn't you know, sure if you were going to say Sarver or Stackhouse. Yeah, yeah, and then Alicia Sarver is, you know, I think she's a sophomore, so she's, you know, one of those that can use some time developing and, mm -hmm. and everything. So, but you got to feel really good. Obviously, if you're Coach Jennings, last year you started 0 7, mm -hmm. and you've won all of those games except that casting game so far that you lost last year in that, you know. So right, all three wins are against teams they lost to last year. So that was, and I mean, you know, they they beat Winnipeg by again. I mean, they it was a pretty thorough yeah. beating. I mean, they, they you know to beat Winnipeg the way they did, and you know they they beaten Bethany Christian by twelve, and that was a very key conference game. That was the one that started that winning streak, and then uh, so yeah, Argus is playing very well, and you know they've got two more games this weekend. You know, at Trinity Greenlawn, another conference game coming up on Friday, mm -hmm. and then at Jimtown on Saturday, and then yeah, your big you, rivalry game against Colorado on Tuesday. And honestly, you, you look at all three of those games, those sh those should be wins. I mean, you know. They have a great chance to be 6-1 and one if they yeah. play as well as they can. You know, that's a little bit of an improvement from 0-7 through their first seven last year. 6-1 <laughs> and one possibly coming in uh, through their first seven this yeah, year. Yeah, confidence, you know, confidence is a big part of that, and um, and, and defensively, you know, I, I think Coach Jennings wants to play more man-to-man, -man, and I think he they did that for the most part. They held a great shooter in Kingsley Croft to two points. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they did a great job. Yeah. So the other game we had on Friday night was Tippecanoe Valley, and, boy, talk about a tough uh, start to your season as far as schedule goes. You know, they were, they were taking on Warsaw. I mean, you got Warsaw and then Northwestern, Back to back. I mean, yeah, you're at home, but mm -hmm. you know those are two teams back to back that are just that's a brutal uh, brutal schedule there. And you know for the uh, for the Vikings and, and Coach Kindig, they they fell on Friday, fifty three thirty to uh, to Warsaw, and and then you know it didn't get any easier for them Saturday night with Northwestern coming in, and, and they lost that one sixty seven thirty six. Right. I mean, look at who they played the first four games. They played Bremen and Aaliyah Foster, mm -hmm. who's one of the best players in the area. I mean, they play Culver Academy and Taylor Bowen, uh, who was, you know, a D1 player going to Lipscomb. They play Warsaw. Caselyn Krebs had just signed with U Indy. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's a very good, she's a D2 player. She's a very good player. Mm -hmm. And then they play Northwestern and McKenna Layton. <laughs> and so it's just a, it was just a very tough group of players, very tough group of teams they faced. Um, scoring's been the problem, but they've also, you know, those are four not only good teams, but four physical teams. Mm -hmm. And I think they struggle with the physicality of those teams. Mm -hmm. a, lot uh, of, a lot of girls that haven't got a lot of varsity experience with that type of physicality. Right, mm -hmm. right. And again, Valley's got only one senior in Mercedes Snap, and they're, you know, they're, yes, the junior class, they've played together for a long time, but... They've never been kind of the relied upon group, and here they are mm -hmm. having to do that. You know, I was at the Logansport game on Tuesday night, and they won that fifty-three to twenty-eight for their first win of the season. And you know, they, they, you know, they they talked about those four games now having gotten those behind them. That 
it'll help them in the long run. And I think we saw that against Logan Sport. I mean, mm -hmm. they got off to a quick start. They were up, you know, 15 to 5 fairly. Well, it was 5 to 5 halfway through the first quarter, and then they go on a 10 0 run. They go up 15 to 5. They were able to, to run a little bit. They were able to, you know, because Undas Valley, you know, like to. You know, not, not only Cadence Malata is a good shooter, but she's a good shooter in transition. She knows she can spot up and get her shot off pretty quickly. And she was great. And then, you know, Corinna Stiles is kind of, you know, figuring out her role. I mean, because she's not a true post player, but she is a forward. Mm -hmm. And she's a really good passer. And she and um, Mercedes Snap work well in kind of that post-to-post -post passing, at least uh, from Corinna. And she, she sees the floor pretty well. Um, she's able to score a lot. She had she had seven rebounds, and Mercedes Snap had six rebounds. So, you know, they were able to hang hang with their opponent on the boards as well, which I think was kind of a problem in those first few games. And then, you know, Molly Moriarty just continues to get comfortable at the point guard spot. So the good news for Valley is the teams they're playing, you might say, get a little easier. It's not going to be that uh, you know that brutal Warsaw North Northwestern Bremen, but they got the next six games on the road. Yeah. So they're going to be, you know, using that uh, white yellow school bus there quite a bit over the next uh, few weeks. Right, and it starts off with a conference game at McConaughey on Tuesday night where they'll have to face Lily Maple, and, you know, that, that's a pretty veteran squad at McConaughey. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be the next true test. Mm -hmm. By the way, I got to talk to Chris Kiesling, the Logan Sport coach, on Tuesday uh -huh. night. He's former uh, principal at Rochester former High School. Former principal at yeah. Rochester High School, and I think it's... Uh, this is just me talking here, but Chris Kiesling is a guy who was at home on a high school, mm -hmm. on a high school bench. He was, he's a guy who loves coaching high school basketball, and I can see, I could see why he would maybe get out of the administration field and get back into coaching. He's just, even even dealing with it, you know, he knows that he's got a lot of work ahead of him, but yeah. that's something he he's he signed up for it and he wants to do it and. Uh, you could just tell that he 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 revels in kind of the process, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, Logan Sports got a nice player and Gabby Ritchie, but it's they were missing Ryan Wiley, who was you know I don't know if you call her a post player, but she might be their best big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a real big team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know how big Wiley is, but watching them last year, they were they were pretty short, five seven, five eight maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it, it's not it's it's not a big team. Mm -hmm. And then they struggled a bit with the ball handling. Yeah. And, of course, Valley is known for their pressure. Valley just turned up the pressure more and more as it went, all, went along. Yeah, so, you know, if you know what you're getting into when you get into it, like, uh, you know, Chris did, obviously it's going to be a process down there. But yeah. if, if you can turn that around, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's been a while since Logan Sport Girls Basketball has been good, obviously, since, you know, Whitney Jennings was there. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if you can turn that around and get them relevant again and in that conference that they're in, I mean, mm -hmm. that would be a huge, huge feather in the cap of yeah. a very accomplished coach. I'd like to say this about Bally, too. You know, their sixth and seventh players are Ava Smith and Chesney Miller, and those are two very athletic players who just, you know, they give you a lot of defense and just a lot of hustle out there. Mm -hmm. And they, they can just run all day, and that's, I think that, I think that's a nice fit with the starting unit. Mm -hmm. So if, if Coach Kindig wants to turn up the heat defensively, he can do that. Yeah. That cross-country background, you're running all day. Yeah, Chesney, yeah. it's it's going to take a lot to tire her out. Yeah, yeah. So they do pick up a yeah. win. And, and Carly Snyder scored her first varsity basket, too. And good. she's you know, a 5'7", five, 5'8", five, five, freshman. It looks like mm -hmm. she has a chance to be a very good varsity player. Good. Yeah, so we'll see. You know, McConaughey is going to be a, a tough one to to go on the road for your first conference game. I mean, you know, they look to be one of the top teams in in the conference mm -hmm. this year on the girls' side, and you know, it's going to be a tough one. And from what I've heard, uh, you know, they told us down there they're they're actually doing some construction in their main gym, so they're going to be playing. I guess all of their home games for the time being are going to be down in their their lower gym, which is basically what you would call their ox gym. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if that'll play a factor in it or not. I mean, it's a pretty good facility, but it does have three courts side by side. You know, does that throw you off as far as playing a game? I don't know. Yeah. So that was uh, that was it for uh, Friday. Saturday, we were at uh, Rochester High School for a kind of a matinee event with the Rochester Zebras hosting Northwood and. 
you know, Val, we've seen it over the last uh, several years. This Northwood team has just dominated the Rochester Zebras, and it was a uh, salute to service day. I wanted to get that in there. That was pretty cool with the uh, guard coming in. Uh, Mackenzie Bradley, who's still a uh, – she's a senior, right, at Rochester? Mm-hmm. Uh, it been, has been part of the uh, the Go Guard program and, and been working with, uh, you know, the recruiters and stuff. So they had some things to do with it. And really cool uniforms, too. I, I thought uh, those actually look similar to the Rochester, you know, normal home uniforms. But uh, I really like the design on there. I don't know. Maybe they need to, to look into getting something like that for their, uh, their normal home uniforms. But... Uh, you know the the team, uh, like I said, Northwood had had pretty much dominated uh, the the matchup over the last few years. Obviously, you know, coming off of a state championship a few years ago, and uh, for Rochester, it was it was going to be a big one because they came in at, at one and two, trying to you know get back on the win column. Right, and Rochester wound up winning forty eight twenty six, and it was you know Rochester went on a a big run early in the game covering like the kind of the end of the first quarter and into the second quarter and built up a pretty big lead they led 28 12 at halftime and then well northwood they just when you thought northwood was going to go away then they start the second half of the Mm -hmm. 9-0 run it goes from 28 12 to 28 21 Mm -hmm. but then over the last quarter and a half northwood scored five points Mm -hmm. rochester had scored them 20 to 5 the rest of the game actually 10-0 the final I think five minutes and fifty seconds. So, um, what what I noticed w- that was kind of interesting is that even with Emma Hadashal and Maddie Heinzman out, mm-hmm. um, Kennedy Jackson and Millie Scorson still came off the bench. Right. And uh, you know, Kennedy had twelve points off the bench. I think Rochester had something like a seventeen to six advantage in bench points. Mm-hmm. So you know. Rochester again showing off their depth even without you know having those two players that they would have obviously have loved to have. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I was talking to Coach Jennings before the game, getting the lineups, and and he said, "Well, this is who we're going to go with." And uh, his comment was, "Well, if we're going to go small, let's just go small, small." And and they did. I mean, Lexi was your only big that, that started off the game, and you right. know, I, I I thought that uh, Callie Watson and then you see uh, Cami Burkett right there. I, I thought they've really stepped their game up uh, with the absence of how to shell. They did a really nice job. It was you know it was interesting talking with coach with Coach Jennings. He was he said that Cami's not comfortable being the point guard, but she looked comfortable. Mm-hmm. She looked very comfortable. And yeah, you know here you see you know Holloway, Watson, and Burkett are all on the court at the same time. So yeah, it was kind of a small lineup, and Northwood just they had they had trouble handling the ball all day. I mean they could, they just could not get into their offense, basically the entire game. And I think Northwood had twenty eight or th- excuse me thirty eight turnovers. Yeah, and I mean you, you got to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt too because they were missing their probably two best guards who who were out with injuries. So mm-hmm. uh, a little bit there with the with the turnovers for Northwood, but. Yeah. Um, and here's that period kind of starting mid to late third quarter where they really kind of took over the game. Mm-hmm. And you got to uh, really, I, I was impressed. I, I think that uh, Riley Holloway is, is starting to get her feel for this team, and, and I think she's kind of getting her uh, sea legs, so to speak, underneath her. I mean, she's she's starting to look like uh, what we thought she would. And, and one way to do that is be a good post passer. Mm-hmm. And she can do that, you know. Yeah, Sydney Hawes, I believe, was also in the starting lineup, and we also saw Lilith Eaton. So we saw mm-hmm. just a lot of guards out there. But yeah, one, one thing, one way you could uh, increase your chance of getting more playing time is be a good post passer and get the ball to to Millie and Lexi. And Rochester was able to do that. I mean, Lexi was, you know, she had twenty one points and seven rebounds. And I think I was talking with Tony Stasiak. I was sitting next to him, and we were we were talking about. Lexi's rebounds, it seemed like she had more rebounds than seven, but when the other team's turning the ball over 38 times, there just aren't many that many rebounds to be had. Right. And, you know, Lexi just, she just plays harder than everybody, it seems like, and she gets to balls that, you know, that, that others can. And so, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, especially after the, Nor- especially after what had happened the previous two games against Cast and Nor- Northwestern, it, it had to feel a lot better. And talking about going on the road and playing at Maconaqua, um well, I guess they got the game tonight at Peru, which right. 
you know, obviously it's a road game, but Peru hasn't really uh, shown a whole lot so far this season. So you would hope that uh, Rochester can go down there and take care of business. But the big one uh, in my mind would be on Saturday. I mean, that's a crazy time. Originally it was scheduled for six, but they are uh, starting at 11 with the JV game mm-hmm. at Maconaqua on Saturday. I mean, get a bunch of teenage girls on the bus and and be uh, you know on the road by. I don't know what time they'd have to leave, probably 9 o'clock or so to, to get down there, uh, maybe a little later. But, you know, that that could be interesting to see how the, the Zebras react to that. Yeah, and, again, we mentioned Lily Maple earlier. You know, they've got Alex Merritt. She's, they've got the two Merritt sisters who help them up front. Uh, you know, Coach West is in his second season. We'll see uh, if they could, you know, I, I remember the game last year at Rochester. I think turnovers were a problem, and Rochester pulled away in the second half in that game. I think Rochester would figure to have a size advantage. Let's see if Rochester's guards can pressure McConaughey the same way they pressure Northwood. So we will have the game tonight at Peru. We'll have that for you on Channel 4 and on RTC4.com. Uh, we will not be able to do the game on Saturday. Uh, just due to the fact that they're playing in that aux gym or that uh, lower gym, like they said, it, mm-hmm. uh, there's just no no place to uh, to set up. So uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to get you that game. But we will have the zebras. And then I've already talked to um, Greg Marchand from um, Lewis Cass, and we're going to be down at uh, Lewis Cass on Tuesday next week for the for the girls' game. Yeah. So. Yeah, so at Lewis Cass on Tuesday and then a home game with Winnemac on Saturday. So four games within the next like week and a half or so. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're going to see you know if they can continue. They're 2-2 two and two as we uh, start this next round of games for the Rochester Zebras. Right. Uh, see if they can continue. Lewis Cass coming off a low-scoring game against Kokomo the other night. They lost 32-16. to 16. 16, wow, yeah. okay. But, uh, Kendall Johnson, one of the best players that we'll see this year. Yeah. yeah. You know, a six-footer who can basically do anything on a basketball court. Right. Very, very versatile. So, uh, also Saturday, Culver hosted Westville and um, the Westville Blackhawks. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, yeah, I'll tell you about that later. But, uh, so, you know, that was one of those games, I, I guess, we, we thought maybe that Culver might be able to be a little bit more competitive. The final score was 53-32. Um, you know, Culver, Coach Lowry, a lot of pieces they're still trying to fit. Mm-hmm. They, um, right, Rose Peterson and Grace Sieber have been kind of the top scorers so far. They've also been the top ball handlers so far, but it's uh, scoring has been an issue at times. They've had, you know, droughts in games. But just, they've also played a, you know, a busy, tough schedule so far. I mean, mm. you look at, yeah, they, look, they lost by nine to lacrosse, but lacrosse is 4-0. Oh. Lacrosse mm. is playing great basketball right. right now. I mean, this is, uh, you know, Coach McGowan is doing a great job over there. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's not, and then, you know, South Central, I mean, that, that was a very good team. I mean, and then, you know, they, you know, they run in a, you know, a Westville team that's, uh, I know the one girl had 28 points for Westville. I mean, she was just terrific, and mm-hmm. so... I mean, Westville is, is, a, is a program that's been on the upswing over the last couple of years. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it has not been an easy schedule so far. I mean, they did, you know, I think Culver still has that win over Trinity Greenlawn to their, to their credit. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, they're just a lot of good area teams. Yeah. One and five, and they did have a, a game Tuesday as well. They were down at Winnemac, and you talk, you know, that's a tough place to play no matter how good the team is, you know, as far mm-hmm. as Winnemac goes. and. I, I actually sat because we didn't have anything else going on. I actually sat and I watched that game, and the, there were times in that in that game that uh, boy, Culver looked really good. They they actually went on a 16-0 run. Mm-hmm. You know, they were down I think 19-3, and they came back and tied it mm-hmm. going into the half. Yeah, and you know, then it was tied at 25. And boy, from from that point on, it was it was all Warriors. I mean, they they finished off on a a, a big run. 25, so my math, what, 18 to eighteen to 2 to, to finish the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and they won 43-27. Right. I've seen Winnemac play twice last week, and I saw them play Argus, and I saw them play at home against Caston on Saturday night. Mm-hmm. They lost both. They lost 46-27 Argus on Friday. They lost 48-40 to Caston on Saturday. Um, the Caston game, though, was an improvement. They got up to a slow start in that game. They were down 16-4 to early in the second quarter. 
but they just hung in there, hung in there, hung in there, and really made Kasten work to close it out. Um, Kasten was up, you know, then Kasten made another run early in the fourth quarter. They went up by 14, but, you know, Winnemac kept just plugging away. Um, you know, Piper Link, she had 11 points mm -hmm. against Argus on Friday. I think she had 10 against Kasten on Saturday. She is... She's a really much improved player. I, I was, uh, you know, she can finish now around the basket, which is. Mm -hmm. And then the the other girl that really caught my eye was Haley Attinger. Mm. I mean, she is she's long, she's athletic. She thinks she can, she wants she thinks she can get every rebound. It seemed like against Caston. I mean, she was hanging in there. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Croft called Caston, you know, a, a tough physical team, and I think that's what a, what a lot of coaches have said about Caston oh, yeah. how physical they are, and they're tough to play. But you know, Winnemac hung in there. You know, Kaya Campbell was much more involved uh, in the second half of that game. Kingsley Croft hit three three-pointers in the second half of that game. You know, you know, Winnemac, you know, uh, you know that, 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 that Argus game left a bad, t you know, Coach Croft, I asked him, I said, did you want to get back out on the court after that Argus game, get right back on the court? He said, yeah, you know, kind of, you could tell in, even in the, kind of the morning shoot-around they had Saturday morning that they were kind of, yeah, you know, we want to. We don't. We don't want to be known for that game. You know, yeah. that was just a rough. That was just a rough game against Argus. And they, you know, they they definitely competed well against Caston, and uh, you know, got got a lot of different contributions uh, in that game. Just kind of ran out of time in the end. And uh, Isabel Scales was just the best. I mean, Isabel Scales was just fantastic in that game. She had twenty one. Yeah, if you could ever say you had a good loss, that that Winnemac loss to Caston would be that coming off of uh, as bad as they did play at right. Argus. Right, and then I think it maybe led, and then maybe it led to that win over Culver on Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, it's, it's so, they're, a, so they're one and one in the league. Yeah, it's a scrappy Culver team. Uh, you know, Grace Sieber, uh, she had some some rough shots, but she ended up hitting five threes mm -hmm. and and really did a a great job of keeping the uh, Cavaliers in it. And you know, it just uh, Winnemac just pulled away in the third and fourth quarter there and, and just had too much for the, the Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. But so Culver, you know, one and five through their first six. Winnemac is two and three through their first five. Um Kasten had a game on Tuesday and you know, if you're Coach Douglas, you don't really like the way they started off that game against Rossville. They were only up five at the half. And that's mm -hmm. not a really good Rossville team and it just didn't seem like the the cylinders were all kind of firing uh, for Gaston there in the first half. Right, but again, uh, you know Bailey Harness, can't, you know Isabel Scales led the way in scoring thing with sixteen. But how about Bailey Harness with a double double, twelve points and twelve rebounds? Mm -hmm. She's one of the most improved players in the area. You know, she's not just kind of this defensive specialist. She can score now, and she, you know, she's another she's another one of those girls who can handle physical play, mm -hmm. and. Uh, caston has got a number of girls like that. Well, you, we saw, you know, in the in the Rochester game, you know, Maddie Smith is is a force inside. You got Brianna Yarber who can rebound and and do a lot of things for you. Right. She had seven points in the win over Winnemac. Yeah, and you know, Zippelman seems to to be back now, so they can get her going as well. I mean, this is a team, and and you know, I, I say they played didn't play the greatest in the first half, but they you know came back and got it done. You know, one by sixteen played a really good second half, and uh, just maybe not the start that Coach Douglas would want. But they they've got a lot of pieces, obviously, that uh, can really play some ball. Yeah, and what's interesting is that they're kind of, again the parts are kind of interchangeable. There's no post player like Jordan Klinger was mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of girls. But that doesn't mean they're not physical. Mm -hmm. they, they can they're strong. They're, they've, they've got long arms on defense, and, and they're, they're a very tough team to score on. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, again, in the chronology of things, you know, they, they had that loss. You know, the, you know they, they were coming off that win over Peru a week, a week and a half ago on that Tuesday, and then lost at North White 42-29, and then came back to beat Winnemac and then beat Rossville. So mm -hmm. the North White game was, you know, a, a, a disappointing game for them. I mean, they, you know... The, um, I think it's it's obviously a very good barometer, especially because the sectional will be at North White, right? And that's a North White team that you know had a very good you know they they've had what seven consecutive winning seasons. I mean they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, now now Caston's got another sectional rival coming up on Monday when Frontier comes to town. 
and that's that means Emma Blissetta Frontier, who's one of the best shooters in the in that they'll face this year. I mean, yeah. she is a dead eye from three point range. Yeah. That uh, yeah, that North White game. That's going to be one of those that you know, if if Coach Douglas can use that, you know, as they uh, move forward in the season for motivation, you know, that could be a good thing, uh, honestly, uh, despite the loss. But yeah, sometimes if you go over there and and you win and you win easy and and then all of a sudden you get overconfident and when you go over there for sectional, then and oh yeah, hey, we got this, we got this, and and sometimes you get bit and. Actually, a loss there probably wasn't the end of the world for the Comets. Yeah. So, well, as we set here, uh, as we speak, Argus setting at three and one, Caston five and one, Culver one and five, Pioneer two and zero, oh, Rochester two and two, Valley one and four, and Winnemac at two and three. We'll talk a little bit here about the upcoming girls games in just a moment we'll take a quick break and be back with more talking sports with val here live in studio the lawyers and staff of peterson wagoner and perkins llp are here to provide the highest quality legal and professional service for their clients presently and for the future from estate planning and trust to adoption and family law to appeals probate and more Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at petersonwagoner.com. Hey, welcome back here, Talking Sports with Val, and, and we've talked about the games of last week for girls basketball, and let's talk a little bit about the upcoming games for this week here on what we have. We already talked Rochester at Peru tonight. Uh, Winnemac hosting North White, that uh, that could be an interesting contest. Right, and you know how will um, Winnemac defend Lindsey Heimlich? I think that's going to be one of the key questions in that game. And talk about two teams that uh, like to play defense. Yeah, I mean maybe a little different style. I think Winnemac more of a man-to-man style. I think North White they play they play quite a fair amount of zone, don't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean they can do a lot of different things, but mm-hmm. they're I don't think either team will want to play too fast. Mm. Could, could it be the first one to 10 wins uh, that game? I, I mean, it, it probably won't be that bad, but I, I, I would look for a low-scoring game yeah, with that one. Yeah, I tend to think. Yeah. So that, that'll that be a, an interesting game, obviously, uh, coming up tonight. So the big one, and this is the one that, uh, unfortunately, things are going to get messed up with us going up to Mishawaka Marion uh, tomorrow night. Pioneer hosting Knox. You know, we talked about the fact that Pioneer's schedule is very light in the front due to the normal, you know, they're normally playing volleyball pretty late, so they they go really light on the front end of their schedule. But an early season game, you know, only a third game of the season for them hosting the Knox Redskins, and, and this looks to be a huge, huge game in the conference uh, standings, you know, even though it's the first game of the conference standings. And, so here's what's going to happen with this one. Here we'll talk about the game in a second. But originally, obviously, we were going to do that game. And with us going to Marion, that's not going to happen. Second plan was the Pioneer crew was going to do that game, which, you know, they're more than capable of doing the game, maybe with just GM audio, but at least they would have a, a good production with scoreboard. Pioneer producer is quarantined. <laughs> so... Third plan, third option, plan C, I guess you would say, is the um, remaining crew is going to record it with the big camera, give the SD card to my wife after the game. I'll take that on Saturday morning and live stream it, uh, you know, from the house on, on Saturday morning sometime, hopefully before noon. So if you're if you're not able to go to the game, we will hopefully still e- eventually get that on for you. It just mm-hmm. will not be live on Friday. Now to the game, Rochester or uh, you know Knox comes in obviously graduated a couple of their uh, you know six footers finally. Yeah. So maybe not as big, but they still have some uh, some size uh, that you know Pioneers gonna have to deal with. Knox has been a little up and down this year. I mean they they beat. A, Pretty good Morgan Township team just destroyed them, sixty-three to twenty. Mm-hmm. And they come back and they lose to Rensselaer. I mean, well, Rensselaer's five and zero too. Rens- so I, mean, I think they, they might say more about Rensselaer, right? 
Uh, Knox has, uh, you know, a great point. You know, it's, it's an interesting battle of point guards when you talk about Ashlyn Brook and Megan Bolin. Mm -hmm. You know, we know about Ashlyn. I mean, she has scored, what, 32 and 27 mm -hmm. in her first two games. And, you know, Megan Bolin is not that type of score, but she's 6'2", mm -hmm. and she kind of spearheads that zone defense that they play. And just it's a, just a unique defense that they mm -hmm. play, and it is just hard to... Hard to figure out. They've got all kinds of length. I know. I know they had a lot of. They even had a lot of height on the, on their JV last year. So that that might be moving up. That's a. It'll be interesting to see kind of how the scoring breaks down for Knox. How, where do they get their points from, and how does Pioneer break down the Knox zone? Mm -hmm. Last year, Olivia Brooke. They put her in the high post, and she had a great. I mean, she was. She almost carried Pioneer in that game. Mm -hmm. I think. I think they were, they came back, they took a lead late, and then Knox made that one final run in the fourth quarter, wound up winning by six. So, but obviously Olivia Brooke isn't there anymore, so uh -huh. how, do you put somebody in the high post? How do, you, how do you try to attack that, or do you try to attack it off the dribble with, with Haley Kreif and Ashlyn Brooke? Yeah, it'll be interesting, and, you know, the nice thing is it, it seems like everybody is back and, and ready to go for Pioneer. They've got... Um, uh, Brooklyn Borges, I, I think, is is back and, and good to go. She played actually against Southwood, which was kind of a surprise because we were told that it was going to be shooting for this one that uh, she would be coming back. So she looked really good. Uh, you know, was was blocking some shots and had a really good game. So having her back will obviously help with the with the height of the Knox Redskins. Um, you know, you talked about. Um, Adinger at Winnemac, well, Kylie Adinger at uh, Pioneer, uh, she's really started off her sophomore season really well. She gives them some height inside as well. And so, yeah, she's pretty athletic and she knows how to finish around the basket. Mm -hmm. So, those are very good signs so far. Yeah. Uh, Macy Baker looks to be back. Uh, she, she played again uh, against the uh, Southwood. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. in that game, she missed the first game due to death in the family. So, you know, they, they look to be full strength. So even though the success that Pioneer has had over the last two years, they've struggled. Mm -hmm. You know, they haven't beat that Knox team in the, either of those two years. Right, yeah. I mean, th you think about that. I mean, Pioneer's gone to the state finals two straight years, but they're 0-2 against Knox the last two years. Yeah, yeah. So they're obviously going to want to get that one. Like they've uh, never beaten Knox since they've been in the conference together. Never have. Never have. Never have. Not, not since Coach Brooks been the head coach. Yeah. Well, obviously, before Coach mm -hmm. Brook, they were, yeah, the, the basketball program was struggling, so that would mm -hmm. make sense. So, yeah, this this is a, a really big uh, early season game for, for Pioneer. Mm hmm And then, uh, you know, they'll have a break and then come back with, uh, you know, Cass County Tournament uh, right after Thanksgiving. Right, and that's going to be interesting because the first round is going to be at home sites. I don't know how many times Pioneer Girls Basketball has ever hosted Logan Sport at the cage. Never. But, okay, that'll be they, the first time then. They Logan Sport, I was talking to, to Brian Strong when we were um, getting ready for the game, football game, that mm -hmm. Pioneer was playing at Logan Sport. He said, Logan Sport has never played at Pioneer. Mm -hmm. He didn't say girls basketball. He said, Logan Sport has never played at Pioneer. So I don't think any of and the boys and... I guess, uh, you know, I, I said they'll have a break. They'll actually be at uh, Culver on Saturday. So they got right, back to backs. Right. Yeah, so back to back conference games for Pioneer this weekend. Right. So let's go ahead, because that's our only Friday game. Let's go ahead and talk about that Culver uh, Pioneer game. Yeah, again, uh, young Culver team facing uh, a pretty dynamic Pioneer team. We'll see how Pioneer, how do they respond after the Knox game. Culver's got Elkhart at Elkhart Christian, so they'll at least have one day of practice in between. Uh, again, uh, you know, as long as Culver can protect the ball, they can maybe hang in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going to be a challenge with anybody against Pioneer. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the the guard play that they have, and you know, Culver. I was, I guess, a little surprised with watching Culver and Winnemac that I thought the younger uh, the freshman would probably, I thought they would be playing more. I, it seemed like he was trying to avoid that, if, if at all possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is definitely some ability down there with Bryn Barrett and uh, Livy Overmeyer and uh, I can't remember Pugh's first name. but Ashley. Ashley. Mm -hmm. Ashley Pugh. So I, I think maybe it's one of those things kind of like when you draft a quarterback, uh, you, you want to try and 
give them some time to, to develop. I think that Coach Lowry is probably trying to give them some time to develop, but I don't know how long y you can give them time to develop because they're pretty developed going in. So mm -hmm. um, We already talked a little bit about the Rochester Zebras at McConaughey. Uh You want to talk any more about uh, McConaughey? No, I, you know, yeah, I, I think that, you know, again, Lily Maple is, she's, you know, she seems like she's been in high school forever. You knew, you knew from day one as a freshman that she was a special talent, and Rochester will certainly respect her going into that game. A lot of uh, people that you talk to around the TRC uh, think that McConaughey, you know, will end the season right there towards the top of that yeah, league. Yeah, yeah, very, yeah, very high opinions. And, you know, McConaughey had a nice one over Western the other night, beat him 44 to 40. Uh, so you know, you know it's pretty. You know they're pretty. I mean, it's a pretty tough-minded team. I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, McConaughey girls basketball has come a long way in these last. I mean, oh this, yeah. The decades, uh, you know, from about 2005 through 2015, it mm -hmm. was very dire circumstances with McConaughey girls basketball. They, since 2015, they since joining the TRC, they 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 picked it up. Yeah, I can I can remember because my my kids actually started uh, school at McConaughey. Mm -hmm. And you know, my oldest went through sixth grade there, and yeah, it was uh, it wasn't the strongest program that you've ever seen for sure. Mm -hmm. So to see them actually, you know, being talked about in the top portion of the TRC is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Tuesday looks to be a big game, a big day for our teams. Uh, we've got Pioneer going to LCC. That game was moved up. That was originally planned sometime in January. There, you probably remember the date exactly, but yeah. Another fascinating matchup because LCC starts five guards. Yeah, yeah. They're small, but they're quick, and they can handle the ball, and they can shoot the ball. And they probably have everybody back. Uh, they, they Surprisingly, they were playing games the next week after they won state in volleyball. That was kind of odd. Yeah. I know they probably have more uh, girls that play strictly basketball than a lot of schools would, but mm -hmm. I know there's several of them that probably play volleyball and basketball. Right. So they should be back to full strength against uh, Pioneer. Right, and here are two schools that are kind of gone down different paths in terms of the state tournament. Pioneer has gone up from 1A to 2A based on the success factor. LCC has gone down from 2A to 1A mm -hmm. after losing their sectional last year. Yeah, uh, it should be really interesting. I know, uh, I don't know how much time, but I know there's some girls that uh, you know are coming up in that freshman class there at LCC mm -hmm. uh, that, uh, you know, I don't know if they'll be big factors in this game or not, but they will be for uh, future games yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. There's another Thompson, I believe, that LCC has. Mm -hmm. Carly, Carly Barrett, who I think mm -hmm. her dad is the boys coach. Mm -hmm. uh, she is a really solid player, uh, lefty. Uh, you don't want to give her anything on the left side of the of the rim. I mean, she'll finish strong at the, at the rim. So, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see at LCC on Tuesday. And then the girls' bell game, Argus versus Culver. And uh, I don't think they played that one last year, did they? They did. They, was, they did end up playing that it one? It was played in January. Okay, it got moved. It got moved. Mm -hmm. And Argus won. It went on a late run. Sydney Shepard did some big three-pointers. Maddie Vanderweel came up big in that game. Culver really had a nice game plan against Lizzie Edmonds. I'm sure they'll try to duplicate that and maybe force somebody else from Argus to beat them. And without Maddie Shedro, obviously who graduated, uh, we talked about Culver's, you know, trying to find who's going to handle the pressure. And you think uh, Coach Jennings and the Dragons will uh, probably look to turn that pressure up full court. We saw, right. we saw them go do some full court stuff against Winnemac. Yeah, so. Argus is another team that's good length. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. I think the cast Argus has good length too with Stoltz and Dunlap out on the perimeter who can guard you. Mm -hmm. And then we talked a little bit Rochester going down to Lewis Cass. That'll tell you some things about the Zebras, right? It's obviously where the sectional is going to be held, playing against the, a uh, possible sectional opponent, mm -hmm. uh, give you a good look ahead to kind of see where things are right now with the, with the Zebras. Right. Not only do they have Kendall Johnson, they have Ellie Logan, uh, a team that, you know, Coach Amor is in his third year now. I'm curious to see what they see how they play. And then uh, Valley and McConaughey on Tuesday. Um you know, we talked about McConaughey and Rochester. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, McConaughey is going to, like we said, be a right. handful for everybody this year. Right, but they've never beaten Valley either, so that's obviously the 
easy point of motivation for that team, and uh, we'll see if Valley's pressure can can have an impact in that game, and we'll see if there's if Styles and Snap down low can have an impact on that game as well. So those are your upcoming girls basketball games. We've got some boys basketball getting ready to start next week, so we're going to talk about all of our teams here in a moment. We're going to take another quick break and come back here. We're talking sports with Val. We'll be right back after this short break. Buy your banking with a simply free checking account from First Federal Savings Bank. At First Federal Savings Bank, we appreciate your referrals. Refer your friend to open a simply free checking account. When your friend opens a checking account, you both can receive a free gift. It's as easy as one, two, three. Simply free checking from First Federal Savings Bank, a simpler way to bank. And remember, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Hey, welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We've been through uh, girls basketball, and it's boys basketball time. Uh, you know, the girls get a couple weeks there all by their lonesome, and uh, that time is up, and, and the boys are going to start uh, tipping off some games next week. I think the first official games will be can happen on Monday, right? Right. You can play a game on Monday if you'd like. We don't have any area teams that are right. doing that. We'll have a couple, though, on Tuesday. Right. So let's let's start off with uh, with our Rochester Zebras. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of new faces. I mean, some familiar faces coming back, but a lot of new faces with six kids graduating last year from that Rochester team that were the uh, undefeated TRC champions. So mm -hmm. uh, how does Coach Malco uh, rearrange this team this year and, and be competitive in that conference well, again? Well, their three most experienced players are guards. When you talk about Tarek McLaughlin, Aiden Smith, and Paul Leisure, Paul's a move-in from Valley. So, and, you know, all three of those guys are under six feet tall, so I think it's fair to say this is going to be a guard-oriented team. Um, there's only one senior, that's Evan Elliott, uh, and then we'll have to see about some of those other juniors, whether they'll make kind of make that next step. Kids like Hunter Campbell and Aaron Huffman, those guys saw a few varsity minutes last year. Will they t be taking on a bigger role this year? L Luke Hunting, maybe throw him in that mix as well. Sounds like they may be looking down to some uh, younger classes to get some of the uh, the size back. Uh, a few of the uh, it's weird that the two tallest players on the team are both freshmen, right? And they're and both listed on the var they're both listed on the JV and varsity rosters. And when you talk about six two Tanner Reinerts. And six five Xavier Vance. Yeah, so they could, uh, you know, obviously you're gonna probably want, you know, rebounding, you know, big presence inside from them to start, and and mm -hmm. you know increase their roles as you uh, go along. But you know, Xavier Vance, I mean, he's both of those kids. I've, I've watched for a long time because they were huge in in the summer baseball that we did. Uh, a few years ago with the, following that team to the Town and Country State Championship uh, Tournament down in Frankton. So I, I've seen these kids, and it's really neat to see them now. They're in high school. And, you know, Xavier has always just been a head and, and shoulders literally above everybody mm -hmm. else as far as his size goes. I think he wears, you know, something in the, in the high teens as far as a shoe, uh, his shoe size. So, I mean, I don't think at 6'4", I don't think he's even done growing uh, yet, so you know he could he could really uh, if if uh, Coach Malco can develop him, uh, he could really be something special here. And, and Tanner Reinerts, uh, you know Joe McCarter, who's the freshman coach and also the president here, was talking about he doesn't look like a freshman. Mm -hmm. I mean he's got a body of a, a upperclassman. Yeah. Uh, the the thing that I'm going to be wondering about as Rochester hits the floor, I mean they've got a scrimmage coming up against Oak Hill on Saturday, and then the mm -hmm. first game at Cold Run. Um, Wednesday, is what will be their defensive identity? Right. What kind of defense are they going to play? Uh, do the heaviest kids embrace defense? Mm -hmm. um, you know, last year we saw mostly zone, mm -hmm. different kinds of zones. Sometimes the two three, sometimes a one three one, sometimes even kind of a three two. Uh, coach Malco has played. You know, in his second stint as coach, he's really done a lot more zone than man to man. Will that be the same way this time, or with the Lack of size. Well, they might, well, they might play more man. Yeah, and it was you know that two three zone that they ran last year was, you know, just special as far as what they were able to do out of that zone. And uh, you don't normally uh, they they had an ability, I guess, to really push that pressure up, you know, higher mm -hmm. towards the volleyball line and and pressure the guards. Normally, you think of a 
a two three zone is more of a you know kind of lay back and and let them kind of you know tempt the other team to shoot outside shots and beat you that way. But that that zone really could push out, and give more pressure. Yeah, you know, against the oppo- opposing team. So they will uh, they'll be opening up at Culver on Wednesday, the traditional opener for the Rochester and Culver teams, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Culver's uh, JV, I guess, is having some quarantine issues, so there's just going to be a varsity game only. Will will that throw a, a wrinkle into the uh, mix as far as, you know, you're, you're nervous as, as yeah. it is, and now all of a sudden you don't have that JV game to calm your nerves. I talk about Coach, uh, Culver coach Kyle Evans. Uh, he, I mean, their numbers will be fine. Mm-hmm. At least their varsity numbers will be fine. It's But, yeah, I mean, certainly the more kids you can get experience. But uh, Culver, you know... I, I, what Coach Evans said was probably kind of interesting. You know, last year they were kind of doing the two post thing mm-hmm. with, uh, you know, with, with Braxton Conley and Austin Zaner, or Braxton Conley and Marquez Anderson, or sometimes it was Zaner and Anderson. But what Coach Evans, as he was watching them play over the summer, he goes, you know what, Austin Zaner and Marquez Anderson, even though they're, I call them post because they're big guys, but they're two better, two of our better outside shooters. And so he goes, so he, he doesn't envision them playing as much of that double post type offense. The, 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 they'll play. The, the, so it's going to be an interesting looking team from Culver's standpoint. And um, obviously, Braxton Conley graduated. He was that leader. He was that, I mean, he, you know, he, he was just a defensive force all year, and he was kind of their defensive quarterback. Uh, but have and then they also lost their leading scorer to graduation in Owen Klinger. So who's going to pick up the scoring load? The leading returning scorer is Emiliano Ortiz, and then you've got Ethan Keller, you know, taking over that point guard role. Ethan, Ethan, basically, you know, by the end of last season, he was the point guard, and Owen had been maybe moved more toward the two guard position, which is so it's kind of you know obviously obviously the, you know they have the two, the two senior big guys and Zayner and Anderson, but. It's kind of let's see how that junior class at Culver develops. Mm-hmm. Keller, Ortiz, Shane Schumann, mm-hmm. those guys. Similar and, to what we M- saw in their M- football team. Mason Herbert is a kid who's come on a lot. Uh, Coach Evans called Mason Herbert their best shooter. So tell me, I've not heard that name. So tell me more about him. What what year is he in? Uh, junior. I think uh, he's like uh, six two, six three. He's okay. kind of kind of lanky, but he's yeah, he's got some. He's got a nice touch from long range. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it could be interesting, you know, with a Rochester team that's, you know, got a lot of new pieces in place. Uh, you know, you got a Culver team that's kind of in a similar spot trying to piece things together first game of the season. It's always a good one between Rochester and Culver, uh, even if the score, like last year, was a little lopsided. But, uh, you know, it's always a, a good parameter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we should have some more fans, too, this year than we did last. Yeah, yeah. So I know uh, last year the, the fan base was pretty limited just mm-hmm. due to uh, all the uh, COVID restrictions. Mm-hmm. So going to be looking forward to that. Um, and how well does Culver defensively handle Rochester's quickness at guard? Right, right. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like Rochester's got nothing in the cupboard because, you know, they've got some really good players. They're, they're going to be a little smaller than they were last mm-hmm. year. So let's just go down the list and, and talk about our team. So we'll go alphabetically and, and talk Argus Dragons. Uh, they're going to open up. You know, we talked about it the other night with Dylan Kindig. They're going to be opening up against Bremen on the road. That's always, you know, a tough one to, to you know, kind of gauge because Bremen is such a, a football school, but they, they do have, you know, a, a pretty history, uh, storied history from their basketball team as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you go you go back to Bo Hunt, even though he was a, a great uh, football player, he was a good basketball player. And I remember Corey Reed when I was in school. You know, he was a great player there at Bremen, and they've had some pretty good success over the years. Uh, you know, so they're going to be at Bremen, and then they're going to be opening up uh, at home on the 30th after Thanksgiving against Valley. So that's that's pretty tough uh, first two games for a brand new coach uh, for the Argus Dragons and. But they do have some experience on the floor. Yeah, it's interesting. You got a first year coach, but you've got I think the top five scorers returned from last year. Right. Uh Caden Brady's injured right now, so it's not certain when he'll be back, but you've got, you know, both Richard brothers, Michael and Sean, you've got JJ Morris, you know, JJ's the leading returning scorer. 
And then you've got Jake Stoltz, and you've got his, his brother, Luke Stoltz, who's a 6'5 freshman. So this is a team with figures to be strong physically. Pretty good size. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, so, um, and Coach, you know, I talked with Coach Jason Breen the other day, and he's, he, he's talking about playing up-tempo. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see. I mean, because you look at, you know, Argus's defensive scoring averages the past four years. I mean, they haven't allowed more than 41 points a game mm -hmm. over the last four years. That is, you are playing some serious defense. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a, for a four-year period of time. And Coach Breeden, he talked about, like, efficiency. Like, we might give up more points this year, but we might score more, too, just because there just might be more possessions in a game. Right, right. Well, yeah, part of that low scoring average was was defense, and part of it was the slowing of the game. Mm -hmm. So, and that's one of the things too that Dylan kind of hinted at, you know, when we were talking about it, that they might be playing a little bit more of a up, up tempo game, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think Coach Breeden has the you know the kids on this team that would love to play that style. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, it's it's. Not so much teaching plays when you teach his system. It's teaching, like, how we screen. Mm -hmm. Where are our shots coming from? Mm -hmm. Those sorts of things. It's not... So, um, we'll see how far along they've come. But this is a... You know, one thing One thing I did... I was doing some research on Argus. Another thing... None of these kids on Argus's team, regardless of grade level, have ever, have ever had anything more than a two-game losing streak their entire high school careers. Wow. That's pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. last, and last year they didn't have a losing streak period. They lost six games, but they didn't just... None of them back-to-back. Back. None of them back-to-back. Back. Hmm. And even then, they've only had two two-game losing streaks. Wow. So this team, that tells you about kind of the mentality and competitiveness of this team. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, 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 I got, uh, yeah, so I, yeah, I stopped by practice yesterday. I, I got a, a, a pretty good vibes. We'll, we'll see how it translates on the court. Well, and I saw, you know, when I was up there on Friday, when we were up there on Friday, I saw J.J. Uh, walk by, and I think he might have grown. Mm -hmm. And he looked like maybe he's putting on a little uh, muscle, too. Mm -hmm. So you, you get, a, you know, a little bit stronger J.J. Morris uh, in the mix with that. Uh, you know, look out, because he was, you know, a great player already, but you get in a little bit more strength on him, then, you know, he's just going to be that much better. Mm hmm so it should be interesting. Yeah, normally, like you said, a uh, first-year head coach uh, doesn't come into a situation with a team like this. Yeah. I mean, usually, you know, like we talk about Chris Keesley, you know, it's a process, right? Uh, this team is, is primed and ready. I mean, they're, they're ready to go. This year, next year, might be their best two years. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Let's just see what they look like offensively. Yeah. So, uh, cast and comments, uh, you know, obviously coming off of back-to-back -back sectional championships, um, you know, and man, they they gave uh, was it um, who was it that they took into the overtime? Lost to Triton at Triton, Triton in double overtime in, in the regional semifinal. Yeah, I mean, they gave them everything they wanted there, and you know, they're going to have a few new faces. Obviously, everybody does every year, but. Uh, you know, we talked to Coach Davis at the uh, the soccer game. I mean, he he seems really excited about yeah. this year. I talked to him again the other day, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, their offensive scoring average was fifty one two years ago, and then it went down to forty five last year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, um, I asked him if they'll play faster to get to to want to get that scoring average back up to fifty one. Um, he wasn't sure about that. But uh, one thing is that their top five scores do return from last year. Mm -hmm. When you talk about uh, Cade Zider, uh, Spin, mm -hmm. Smith, Bryce Rudisill, Jake Passion. So they'll have a lot of scoring coming back from last year. And it, I mean, I mean, it's interesting. This is, you know, you know, I, I asked Coach... Davis, our, our expectations higher this year, given who you have coming back, and he said that's for other people to decide. You know, we just, you know, because and that, and that's kind of you know the way Coach Davis always has handled it. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to be humble about this. You know, we'll, we'll let other people talk about us, but we'll just, you know, do our work and slowly get better. Now, if you think last year, I mean, they, 
you know, they had COVID issues at the beginning. Right. They had injury issues at the beginning. They started oh, one. Yeah. They started one and seven. So you look at the record. They went ten and sixteen. But yeah, I mean, they they find he goes he goes yeah we finally started to play the way we thought we could play about the yeah. last you know, about sectional week or the you know just prior to that. Yeah. And they, and they had a very they played look at who they lost to. I mean, it was just they played a very difficult schedule last year. So mm-hmm. I think you know just having it again and. This is just in general. There will never be a crazier boys basketball season than last year. Right. That was the I, cra- hope. I mean, that was the craziest season of our lives. And I think just having a more normal season, having more normal off season will be to their benefit. Yeah. The the normal off season I think is, you know, huge mm-hmm. because they were able to uh I think they, they had a great summer. I, I think uh, you know, talking to Coach Davis, you know, about his summer, it seemed like they, they were really excited about the way they progressed over the mm-hmm. summer, right? And um, you know, will, will they will they try and pressure the ball defensively a little bit? Again, when you think of Cassie, you think of the switching man to man. But will they? A kid like Bryce Rudisill is so good at you know getting in the passing lane and mm-hmm. getting out running a bit. Uh, will they maybe try to run a little bit more? Yeah, you know, this is a, a pretty athletic team. It's interesting, you know. Joey Spin has really improved his outside shot. You know, because we, th- we think of Joey as kind of a guy who can penetrate to the basket. Mm-hmm. And meanwhile, he said that Kate Zider's really worked on penetrating to the basket <laughs> to go with his outside shot. So yeah. it's going to be, you know, it'll be interesting to see uh, will they be kind of multi-dimensional offensively. Yeah. And then Sam Smith has just worked on finishing around the basket. Mm-hmm. And you know, Sam's a guy who's going to get he's going to spend a lot of time on the foul line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick break here. We'll come back. We've talked a little bit. About- a little bit about mm-hmm. Culver, but we can talk some more about them. Grant Hickel, too. He, yeah. he's, he's really stood out of practice, yeah. according to Coach Davis. I want to mention yeah. him. Yeah, so uh, Kasten, uh, we didn't mention this, I guess. So Tuesday they will be at Lakeland, and then on December... F- L- Lakeland Christian. Lakeland Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I knew that in my head. Mm-hmm. I forgot about Lakeland High School. Uh, and then their home opener will be December 1st, and that's going to be interesting. It's going to be Lewis Cass, so... That'll be an interesting one. Yeah, and the uh, Cass County invite. Again, yeah. it's at home sites this year, so Lewis Cass comes to Cass, and that'll be a very interesting matchup. Yeah, so girls, boys, doubleheader that night. Yeah. And we're still working on whether we're going to be covering those first-round games. Uh, we're talking to the ADs and seeing how they want to handle that, but that's a, that's a heck of a first game at home mm-hmm. <laughs> against a uh, really good Lewis Cass team, so we'll see how that goes. So. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk more here with Val on Talking Sports with Val in just a moment. The Winning Edge is your local provider for all your sport and school athletic needs. From providing customizable sportswear to engraving trophies, the Winning Edge strives to help teams find their edge on the playing field. Call 574-223-6090 or visit their website at www.thewinningedgeathletics.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val on a Thursday afternoon, and we're talking some boys basketball here in this segment. We we've already been through Rochester, Argus, Caston, and Culver. We talked uh, earlier about Culver when we were talking about the Rochester mm-hmm. Zebras. So let's go down to uh, Pioneer. They're going to be probably one of the later teams to open their season. Their first game will be that. Uh, game that we talked about, you know, the opener of the Cass County Tournament against Logan Sport at home for the uh, first time ever, as far as what Brian Strong told me. Mm-hmm. So the first time ever, Pioneer will be playing Logan Sport at Pioneer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously we know uh, Ezra and Adai graduated. You know, that was quite a bit of their speed. Uh, they also lost Kleppinger to graduation, so... What uh, what do we know about Pioneer coming back here as as we move into the uh, the new year? Right. I mean, Ezra Llewellyn and Hunter Kleppinger were their top two scorers from last year. Their leading returning scorer, here's a trivia question, who's Pioneer's leading returning scorer? I would probably say Drew McKay. Yeah, that would be correct. It's yeah. Drew. And so, uh, you know, I was talking with uh, Coach Darren McKay, and he said that it took about half a season for Drew to kind of become uh, a accustomed to the speed of the varsity game, but yeah. he, he got there eventually. And then, 
you know, uh, but the talk around, you know, the, the, the work around Pioneer basketball this whole offseason has been offense, offense, offense. Uh, not, only, not only shooting, but ball handling, you know, being able to shoot, you know, with a hand in your face, you know, under, being able to handle the ball under pressure. They worked a lot on offense because when you think about it, the 2-3 zone, that, that was something they really found their way with mm -hmm. as the season went on. Pioneer's defensive scoring average last year was around 44, mm -hmm. which was, that was their best defensive scoring average since 2013. Wow. Which was the last Skaggs year as coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, so yeah, it was a different style of play, but they got you know they got a cuss you know and kids like um, you know Drew McKeg, Gavin Clem, uh, Coach McKeg really raved about Christian Scott's athleticism. Mm -hmm. um, you know Caleb Sweet is a kid who just does you know kind of what the team needs. Mm -hmm. You know Brock Robinson and I was healthy and he and he's had a real impact at, both as a ball handler and as a defensive mm -hmm. just pesky defender. I mean he's right. going to bother you uh defensively. And so um you know even uh Jacob Ziegler's you know come on Eli Miller's had a pretty nice camp so mm -hmm. far. So mm -hmm. uh but it's finding way to finding ways to score more points cuz they they just had droughts at times last year. Mhm. Mm well, and a little bit of the style of the team. I mean, they they kind of have done that in the last few years. They they kind of live and die by that three a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you you saw a little bit more uh, as the season went on of of working the ball inside. But uh, you know, do we think that they'll they'll try to to do that a little bit more too, or is it going to be a, a three point uh, barrage as we've seen uh, in the past? I don't. I don't see it being a three-point barrage. I could be wrong. I, I, talking with Coach McKay, he he wasn't talking about mm -hmm. three-point barrage. He 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 thinks that they have four or five kids who can score with their back to the basket. Yeah, yeah. Well, that would be good. And you know, you talk about Brock Robinson. You know, not only does he give you some ball handling, but I mean, gosh, he's strong as an ox. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to move him around. Right. When he gets low on you. I mean, it's maybe more of a football term, but it, mm -hmm. it works. That it works in basketball too. Oh, yeah. He gets low on you, and he's tough to get around. Yeah, yeah. He provides a uh, a nice solid base, and so they'll be opening up at home versus uh, Logan Sport on the thirtieth. It'll be interesting to see how the uh, Pioneer Panthers look this year. Right. Last year, I think they started zero and six, but I think they played. I think they had a winning record after that. Mm -hmm. oh, well, I mean, really tough first part of the season for them. I mean, they've got a tough schedule. Right. And I mean, they, you know, they, yeah, I mean, look at who they, I mean, they, they were playing Ross. We saw how good Rossville was in the yeah. original. And Pioneer yeah. lost to Rossville by eight, and it was a pretty tight game the whole way. I mean, and it, it was, was there, wasn't it? It was at Rossville, mm -hmm. too, yeah. Well, and then you also think about, too, they were playing semi-state football last yeah. year. So, yeah. you know, a lot of those kids were uh, coming in late, and, mm -hmm. you know, you didn't have Brock at the beginning of the season. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, Kind of like the girls' basketball team at Pioneer, they've they've had more of an opportunity to uh, get those early season practices mm -hmm. in than they had in the years past. Mm -hmm. uh, here is the uh, the really intriguing team for me this year of our teams. I want to see how this this goes, and that's uh, Valley. You know, obviously Paul Laser moves to mm -hmm. Rochester, so that's a big hole and then obviously you know the tragedy that was with uh, Brendan Stump and right and and I talked with coach Chad Patrick nobody's going to wear number 4 ever again for Valley basketball no in honor of Brendan and yeah uh there'll only be 11 kids on the roster mm -hmm. i mean the the 12th there'll be an empty seat on the bench for games this year so so yeah so i mean it's obviously going to be huge uh you know how they handle that because you know that's Something we talked about last year, you know, something kids shouldn't have to deal with. Mm -hmm. But it, unfortunately, is something that they have to deal with. And um, But, I mean, you look at the kids that they've got coming back. I mean, is there a bigger team across the board in the conference? Right. Dawson Perkins is 6'7". He had a great AAU year. He played a, you know, again, Dawson's a senior, but he really didn't play his first full, you know, he didn't come out for basketball until his eighth grade year, and then he got hurt right away. So it was really his first full year of basketball. It wasn't until his freshman year. So he plays in a really tough AAU team, I think, out of Fort Wayne, mm -hmm. and he plays some really good competition. He's he can step out, he can shoot that jump shot a little bit now, but he's he's so athletic. And I mean, again, he's a you know made it the state finals in the high jump. Right. He's, he's a, just a crazy athlete. And then Nolan Cumberland, he's got more. You know, again, he's going to be a, a really good scorer for them. I mean, he's six three. 
He's worked on his outside shot. He can drive to the basket, put, put the ball on the floor and score. Um, those two will be their top two scorers. And then, obviously, they lose Paul Leisure, but one kid they get back was Tade Kaiser. You know, Tade is a junior. He went to Valley as a freshman. He went to Warsaw as a sophomore, and now he's back at Valley. Hmm. And, uh, you know, Coach Patrick said, boy, he's he just came back different. He transformed his body. He's going to be one of our better defenders. Mm-hmm. Uh, defensively, Valley's, you know, Valley had that great run in 2019 when they won the sectional. They played just phenomenal defense for about a month. You know, from about February 1st all the way through sectionals, they just played phenomenal defense. But that has, you know, getting back to that is going to be key. Because it seems like, and one thing with, is that Valley always has had that defensive stopper. And you think about their 2013 sectional team, they had Jacob Ritchie, who just, Hey, I, whoever the number one scorer on the other team is, I'm taking him and I'm stopping him. Mm-hmm. They they wanted that challenge, and we'll see it. We'll see how Valley can get to that point mm-hmm. uh, if, if this year. Who who will be that guy? Will it be Tate Kaiser? or Will it be somebody else? Yeah, and they'll be opening up with two road games. They'll be at OD on the 27th, and then that game we talked about at Argus on the 30th. And yeah, and Valley lost to both of those teams last year. Yeah, and again Valley. I mean, again, this is another team. You know, again, this, they're going to benefit from just having anything close to a normal type mm-hmm. start to the season. I mean, they didn't get started last year until December 1st. It was just, you know, one kid would come back from a quarantine and another kid would go in quarantine. Mm-hmm. It was just, so that that was that was the issue. And, you know, again, the, the key thing is I mean, how many of those kids in the junior class uh, will we'll kind of take that next step where we know about Nolan, mm-hmm. but will a kid like, say, Cooper Walls mm-hmm. or Tate Kaiser, I mean, who are the next juniors that will step forward and, and kind of give Valley that you know third score to go with Perkins and Cumberland? Yeah. Well, their uh, Marshall slash Stark County flair to the first part of their season will continue as well with their home opener. They'll be taking on Knox, and you know OD and Knox are always hard games because those two teams, you know, they're just going to be very physical. Um, I don't know much about mm-hmm. Knox, but usually Knox has some pretty good size as well. You know, it just obviously varies from year to year. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's a that's a pretty uh, interesting opening, you know, at OD, at Argus, and then home versus Knox. A lot of people are wondering, wait a minute, Valley isn't opening the season against Warsaw on Thanksgiving Eve? And the answer is no. Uh, both Coach Patrick and Coach Moore from Warsaw got together. Sadly, they wanted to move the game later on in the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coach Patrick didn't like playing Warsaw right off the bat. Thought, well, if we play them later on in the season, right before sectionals, that'd be good. So I think they're playing like February 22nd. Yeah. So Valley's last four games of the regular season are against Northwood, Triton, Warsaw, and Wawasee. Well, that'll tell them where they're at. Yeah. <laughs> so that will, if there's a schedule that will get you ready to go for right. the postseason, that'll be it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll definitely challenge them. So that'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, like you said, the biggest thing, you know, last year was just, getting everybody on the floor. I mean, I, I think it was, if I remember right, it was down to just before the first uh, game, before they actually had everybody even at practice. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just never yeah. were able to practice together, and then they get, just kept having people out, you mm-hmm. know, from from various uh, times for quarantine. So, Oh, one other thing. Valley added Mishawaka Marion to their schedule. <laughs> and in basketball at at Mishawaka Marion at Mishawaka Marion so yeah that'll be interesting mm-hmm. so so the schedule will get them ready for the 3A tournament mm-hmm. and you're going to need to be because that Northwood team I mean that Northwood team they got there was a bad call in that in that regional at Newcastle last year if if that call goes the other way they they might have gone to Gainbridge Fieldhouse they might have wound up in Indy mm-hmm. they're loaded yeah. And they were young. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very young last year. They're loaded, they're big, and they're, yeah. I mean, they're going to go 7, 8 deep. And they I mean, they were very young last year. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a surprise, I mean, that they went as deep in the tournament as they did last year because they were so young. Mm-hmm. So that'll be interesting. You know, Valley obviously playing in 3A. They've, you know, got their hands full from year to year with the with the sectional. And that's a, that's a tough sectional usually anyway. Yeah. For Braden Shepard to take on a bigger role this year, yeah, can handle the ball more, yeah. And D- Don Welk is another key. He's another one of those kind of juniors who's gonna could really. Landon Walters is a kid who's gonna see a, a, an expanded role. Dom Welk could be. Dom's a very good defender. Okay. 
All right, anything else on Valley you want to talk about? Mm, not for right now. I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how they see how they do. They, yeah. they got, they, you know, they got a lot of they got a lot of length, and, and, and uh, it should be it could be an interesting team. But uh, they're they're kind of one of those. I don't know where they're what, what might happen. Yeah. All right, so uh, down to the Winnemac Warriors. Um, they're going to uh, be opening up on Tuesday versus Twin Lakes, so one of the earlier games that we'll see uh, with our with our teams. And yeah, I mean, look at that schedule. Your first game is against Twin Lakes, and then I think the next five are on the road. Yeah, and they go to Rochester on the third, and uh, that's all the farther down yeah, I went. No, but yeah, I mean, that, no, that that doesn't mean. Yeah, I mean, not that. I mean, you look at yeah, they got to go to two Plymouth. That's a winnable game. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'll, so we'll see. When the max top two scorers are back from last year, when you right. talk about. When you talk about Russell Compton and Bo Brandt, mm-hmm. you know, they've got an experienced point guard in, in Ryan Greger. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, you know, uh, Jane Terry's back. Um, you know, I, I assume Alex Stark is back. I mean, that, you know, they, they should, you know, there, there's experience back there. It's just a man, uh, you know, scoring points was kind of an issue last year mm-hmm. for them. Um, defensively, I, you know, they played hard defensively. Mm-hmm. Uh, when every time we saw them. Again, here's another team that it's just hard to judge them based on last year. I mean, they didn't play their first game last year until December 22nd. (laughs) And then they played 23 games in 70 days. Mm -hmm. 23 games in 70 days. Mm -hmm. I don't think many NBA teams play 23 games in 70 days. Maybe that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly no major college teams play that many games. Uh, So, yeah, so I, I think that kind of prevented them from having a lot of good practice time. Um, but again, it's it's a it's a team with a lot of uh, with a lot of experience. You know, Logan Schultz is back. He's six five. Yeah, yeah, and both ways, mm-hmm. tall and wide. I yeah. mean, he's he's a big boy. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it'll be interesting. I, I'm sure Coach Hugler is going to really look for this senior class. I mean, obviously, like what they did on the football field to step up, and and you got to look Russell Compton probably going to. Uh, you know, take the the team to that next level. If if they can get to that next level, it's going to be Russell Compton leading the way. I would think. Mm-hmm. I mean, just such a great athlete and, and such a strong kid. I mean, he's about six two. Is you know himself. I think and yeah. You know, what I now what I'll be curious about is defensively what will Coach Hugler want to do with this group? Mm-hmm. Um, when he had the Larkin brothers and uh, those guys, it was mostly man. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wilson Smith and those guys. The last couple years, it's been mostly zone. So Coach Hugo, Coach Hugo can coach it any way. But uh, what will he want to do? With, what will be this team's best defense? Is what gets my curiosity. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't know as much on the on the boys' side about Twin Lakes. Um, you know, the pretty well, pretty as, tough team, I would assume. You know, Ken, as long as Ken Adams is on the sideline, they're going to be very good. And you know, they won their sectional last year. You know they had an incredible game against Pioneer in the sectional final. I think they were down, I think they were down by four with 30 seconds to go, and came back to win by four. Uh, last year that was not one of his bigger teams. It was kind of like four or five guards, mm-hmm. but quick. Mm-hmm. So then uh, we'll get to see uh, another one. The uh, Winnemac Warriors will be at Rochester then on December 3rd. So mm-hmm. you know that'll that'll be a, an interesting early matchup between Rochester and Winnemac. A couple of our teams playing and. You know, trying to trying to feel out you know how their seasons are going to go. Right. So, all right. Well, let's take one more quick break here. We'll have a few minutes when we come back, and uh, we'll uh, kind of wrap things up here, talking sports with Val for a Thursday afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. RTC Fiber Communications knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input. Make our choices and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact RTC Fiber Communications. Connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. Didn't think of that. Hey, welcome back here. We're talking sports with Val and. Uh, of course, you know, my mind is always about basketball, right? It's basketball and then, you know, off season for basketball and then, you know, preseason for basketball. And, uh, you know, give, give it to Val here because he's like, hey, we haven't talked about wrestling and swimming. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. So, 
you know, obviously we've talked about wrestling and swimming, uh, you know, not so much the swimming yet, but the wrestling at Rochester. I mean, boy, they, they're, they're actually practicing in the ox gym because they don't have room in the wrestling room for all the kids. I mean, it's crazy mm -hmm. what Coach Guard and, and this program look like right now. Right, and, you know, everybody who made – they didn't have any state qualifiers last year, but everybody who made semi-state is back. And uh, the, the interesting thing that Coach Guard was talking about is that Eli Swengo is moving down from 195 all the way down to 170. You don't hear often hear that, but he said he was wrestling at about 180 last year. Mm -hmm. He was giving up about 15 pounds to most of his opponents. Oh, he, so. was, he was wrestling up that much yeah. from his actual weight. Yeah, so now he's... Instead of being a light 195, it'll be a strong 170. And then Caleb Schaefer, who wrestled at 170 last year, will move up to 182. Mm -hmm. And Alex Deming, who wrestled at 182 last year, will move up to 195. Mm -hmm. So that they're hopeful that can be kind of a murderer's row of, <laughs> Sounds of, like it. of uh, Swango, Schaefer... Deming, Brady Beck, and Marshall Fishback. Oh, gosh. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. so you're going to have to bring the lumber if you want to beat those guys. And, uh -huh. you know, it was interesting. <laughs> Coach Guard said, we're having trouble finding somebody who can handle Marshall in practice. Yeah. Even the, even the adults are having difficulties dealing with Marshall. He is just... Because Marshall, he, he wrestled most of last year at 255. He's around 275 this year, and that's 20 pounds of muscle that he added. Right. I mean, he he's not... Yeah, I mean he's he's even stronger. And we saw him during football season about the way he played, and you know, uh -huh. so he he felt like he needed that, especially when he ran into that kid at, at semi state. So from mm -hmm. Carroll, so yeah, I'm, I'm, it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of year Marshall has. And of course, you know, he was a semi state qualifier. Brady Beck was a semi state qualifier, and then you know the lighter weights too. There's a freshman in Wyatt Davis. Um, he's been dealing with. Uh, again, Coach Guard just said he was dealing with a family tragedy, so our prayers t to Wyatt and his fam uh, family, whatever they're dealing with. But he'll be a, he might not be ready to go at the start of the year, but he'll step in in either 106 or 113. Look for Ethan Holloway to move up from 113 to 120. Um, great look for Grayson Guard to move up from 145 to 152. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty, I mean, you're, just to make this lineup is it's going to take a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Aaron Swango is going to be at 126, back at 126. You know, now, that was a brutally tough weight class last year, so we'll see how Aaron does. But then the, the Wabash and Miami County is loaded with 126 pounders. Yeah. Ones. Boy, that, that just sounds like a just a really good lineup, though, from top to bottom. I yeah. mean, you know, we, we saw how uh, how good they were last year, and, and you know, they're, they've got some pretty lofty goals. Uh, yeah. But they might just, they might just get them. I talked to some of the kids, again, it was off the record, obviously. I talked to some of the kids after the football game against Lavelle. You know, they you know they got the tears out of their system in about 10, 15 minutes, but they're already looking forward to wrestling. These kids are excited about, about uh, yeah. the season upcoming. Yeah, and the, and the other thing with the program, and I'm not sure how this works, but their uh, numbers as far as the, the girls that are wrestling. Six girls. Yeah, so now do they have their own, they don't have to wrestle boys anymore they actually have a girls program Brandon, yeah yeah um in fact they're going down to northview high school which is in brazil indiana for this for a tournament this weekend the six of them okay um and with um jaden geller and grace Hirons, they had two girls replaced at the state girls meet last year yeah so not only is he building a, a great program on the boys side but the the girls numbers are increasing and uh not only in numbers but in talent as well mm -hmm. so that's that's great to see mm -hmm. Um, so some of the other area wrestling programs that, uh, that might be, uh, interesting. To well, the Lone State Qualifier that we had in our area last year's back, Basley Owens is back right. at Valley. Right. Um, you know, they've got... Senior this year? Uh, or is junior? I, think, I believe he's a junior, and then Aaron yeah. Hammer. Uh, he made it to semi-state last year. He'll be back. Um... Yeah, uh, so th those are probably the, the primary guys. Then Winnemac, I mean, they, you know, they, they should be very good again. I think they've won the Hoosier North in the last two or three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very. Uh, and I, I've heard uh, through the grapevine um, that Pioneers' numbers are getting better mm -hmm. uh, in their wrestling program. Hopefully Logan Smith, and I was worried that he got banged up toward the end of football season. Hopefully he'll be ready to go for the start of wrestling season. And then... Uh, and then uh, yeah, Schnurple, uh, 
Peyton Schnurple, the younger Schnurple. Yeah. Back. He's, he was a regional. Remember, Pioneer couldn't compete at the regional last year. The whole team got quarantined, and that really, I just hate for that to have happened to them. Right. To make it to regional, and you don't get a chance to compete, so. Yeah. Um, you know, up at Culver, they've they've had some, uh, traditionally, they've had some really good wrestling up there, but the numbers the last few years have been a little down. Do we know anything about what to uh, uh, Hunter expect Evans, up there? I think, uh, Hunter Evans should be back. He'll be at that 195, 220 range. Mm-hmm. Uh, numbers have been, uh, yeah, I don't know what their number situation is like, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of similar to Caston, right? They've they've not had real good numbers for yeah. the last few years. Yeah, uh, well, Ethan Amasquita is back. I think, uh, but yeah, Caston's had around six or seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, you know, no wrestling at Argus. So uh, who else did we miss? Anybody? Is that everybody? No, I think that's everybody. everybody. Uh, and then swimming, uh, Rochester and Valley, both uh, our, our main swimming schools. What uh, what are we looking for from them? Uh, well, you had uh, um, the girls' side. They've got a couple of newcomers on Kendall Bradley and Ava Thomas. And they both decided to try diving. Really? Yeah. Or like, well, Kendall's not a newcomer, but she's a newcomer to diving. Yeah, because they didn't really have any divers last year, did they? Yeah, she just said to the coaches, I'd like to try diving. Yeah. Well, they didn't have any girls divers last year, so yeah, sure. And then Ava Thomas is a freshman. She's doing some swimming events and some diving. Right. Uh, good, Really good golfer. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Bella Riffle is back. She, you know, Again, Coach Stephanie Brown always preaches versatility. You know, it's not like you're a freestyler, you're a butterfly, you're a back breaststroke, you're a back. It doesn't work that way at all. I mean, it's just everybody is, you know, going to swim every event and then, pieces of the puzzle kind of come into shape once February starts and you've got to put together a sectional lineup. Mm-hmm. You know, Madeline Calloway is back. She can, you know, she's done everything from the 50 free to the 500 free. Mm-hmm. You know, Kendall, Kendall's probably more of a, a sprinter. Mm-hmm. She does more of the 50 and 100. Mm-hmm. And I know they have a, uh, a meet coming up uh, at Plymouth, right, pretty quick? They lost at Plymouth. But they already had it. 32 to 49. Rochester had 10 girls. Plymouth had 27. Okay. So, again, it's a number sport. Mm-hmm. Especially when you talk about those third, fourth, and fifth places. You know, yeah. Yeah, they go clear down that far with points. Yeah. Okay. So, Rochester's 10 girls, 15 boys. Uh, boys' side, uh, the two Steininger brothers, Dylan and Wes. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, you know, they're both really good. Wes is probably the team's best butterflyer. Dylan might be the best breaststroker. Mm-hmm. And then, um, but they, you know, again, just a lot of good kids who can do different events. Mm hmm. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how kind of they slot in. Obviously, Jake Seifer had just a terrific freshman year last year. And, you know, I was talking with Stephanie Brown, and she goes, he just, he, he wants the work. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you tell him, okay, we need you to do this and this and this, and, and no complaints. He just mm-hmm. does it. In fact, he, he wants, if anything, he wants more work. Mm-hmm. I think he was like fifth in the 200 free and second in the 500 free at sectional last year mm-hmm. as a freshman. I mean, that and that's that's tough because... That's a sign that he can handle the work, and he's only going to get stronger over time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Pey- Peyton Hyde is a team leader as well. Yeah, yeah. So the first time in, in quite a while, there's no Beals in the pool. That, yeah. That'll be an adjustment. Uh, you know, obviously Mason graduated a few years back, and mm-hmm. uh, I saw he's, he's done some great things at uh, Alvet. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Helped his team qualify, I think, for a, a national uh, ranking or something there. So... He was he was always real good with uh, helping us call the the girls sectionals as well. Mm-hmm. You know him and Reese. So um, yeah, I guess I I said Valley and Rochester are swimming schools. I forgot Pioneer. You know it's kind of right. You know a small school like that to have a pool and a facility like they do. It's, yeah, it's, Valley. I, I'm gonna give a shout out to Brandon Hoffman. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they suffered some graduation losses, but he's back. Um, and then Pioneer, I think, with Chloe Chan on the girls' side, set the school record in the breaststroke last year, mm-hmm. the sectional. So yeah. she's back. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, about going to do it for our time here for today. And, uh, you know, like I said, we're going to be up at Mishawaka Marion tomorrow night for uh, some semi-state football between Mishawaka Marion and Burbuff Jesuit. So winner of that one goes down to uh, Indianapolis to play next week for a state title. So Can I give a shout-out? Yeah. To Mallory Hyatt and Brian Hernandez Rios, both of Grace College. Yes, both, yes. Both won the NCCAA, that's the National uh, Christian College Athletic Association National Championships in cross country, last week at Joplin, Missouri. And both the Grace girls and boys teams won national titles 
Again, that's the NCCAA this weekend. They're at the NAIA National Championships in Washington State. All right. So they're up in the Pacific Northwest. But congrats to those. Yeah, huge. I mean, I mean national champions. I, I, yeah. I, I didn't foresee that. And congratulations to uh, uh, Calvary Lingenfelter. He had a three-pointer for Grace College the other night. Play, plays on their basketball team. Yeah, from Rochester. And our condolences to the friends and family of a sports uh, personality named Mark Smith. As people know, I'm from the region. And he was a guy who I had no idea, but I was kind of... He was kind of my inspiration, even though I only got to meet him once. Mm -hmm. He did. A, he was a sports writer. He was a sports caster. He did TV. He did radio, and I probably even borrowed one of his ideas for one of my one of my poll articles that I wrote in my previous lifetime. So he was a guy who was. He, his main schools were Crown Point, um, Lowell, and Hanover Central. He always said that he on Friday Saturday mornings that he would he would watch a f football game on TV. He gave us a shout out a couple times. No. Yeah. Nice. He gave our friends at WHME a shout out. He wanted to see what was going on in the South Bend area because he was. So he was, uh, from what from what I heard, he was just a great guy. I got to meet him once. It was in the 2015 Girls Basketball Regional. He was covering Hanover Central. As many of you know, they lost to Rochester in the regional final. Right. I remember him saying that he was very impressed by all the black and gold around town, that, mm. about how the town was in the Rochester. But he was uh, definitely, you know, he, he was, I mean, this was, ba I mean, they, this was like the early 90s. They had like a 10 o'clock. A ten o'clock newscast in the region, and he was the sports guy, and he was, you know, he, he was very opinionated. Uh, he he was very opinionated, but he was very, he was very funny too, and he was very, uh, it was very, you know, like he would say things like he would talk about like strength of schedule, the importance of strength of schedule. I was like, I never thought of that before. Again, I was just a kid back then, but yeah, he was he was a very influential sports personality, sports media personality. He did a little bit of everything, and our condolences to him and his family. Yeah. All right, we'll be off next week, obviously, for the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you get a chance to uh, eat a lot of turkey and enjoy it with your friends and family and, uh, and you know, just uh, have a little bit more of a normal uh, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks with Talking Sports with Val, and uh, we'll have a lot of games to, uh, to talk about when we get back. So thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you later.